what happens to the movement of our mass on a spring if you start to tune down the friction. The coefficients in our matrix A will become a bit different. Our matrix A will no longer be equal to PDP inverse. The eigenvalues will become complex. But wait a minute, that's no problem. That means that we have, instead of A equals PDP inverse, we will have A equals PCP inverse. And we already know how to solve x prime equals c times x. So we will probably be able to do x prime equals PCP inverse times x as well. Let us try and solve this problem and see what happens to our mass. So suppose we have x prime equals a times x, where a equals PCP inverse. Then we know c looks like a a b minus b with lambda equals a plus b i. And we know how to find p. We had to take the real part of the eigenvector v as our first column of p and minus the imaginary part of our eigenvector as a second column of p. And this way we could write a equals pc p inverse. So what happens to our differential equation? Well, it's all the time the same trick. And now again, we take y equals p inverse times x. So what happens if we do that? Yes, we have y prime equals p inverse times x prime, because p does not depend on time. Then we have x prime equals a times x. We know a x, sorry, a equals p c p inverse. So we get a p inverse p c p inverse times x. And then p inverse and p are cancelling each other out. We're left with c. And p inverse times x equals y. So we have a system of the form y prime equals c times y. And we are able to solve that. So what are we going to do? First solve for y. We know already how to do that. And then we find back our x. As we see happening here, y of t equals e to the power a t times the rotation matrix times y not. That's what we have already seen. And then for x we get x equals p times y, x equals p times y. Well, y equals e power over here, rotation matrix over here, and times y not, and y not equals p inverse times x not. So here we have our formula for x of t. Well, looks awkward, of course. Let's see in an explicit example how it looks. So we take a 0, 1, minus 2, minus 2, which means that in this case we tune down our friction a bit. c over m equals 2 equals k over m. And with those coefficients we find a equals p c p inverse with c over here and p over there. And of course you're going to check this, right? Um, and then let's see what our solution looks like. We have the solution over here. We find uh, an a of minus 1, which means that we are going towards the origin. We get e to the power minus 1t here or there. So we're going in the y space towards origin. We have a b equals 1, so positive angle. So we're going towards the origin, circling towards the left. We're circling here counterclockwise in the y space. But pay attention, what happens in the x space? First of all, we draw minus 1, 2, v1. Positive v1 is in that direction, minus 1, 2, so positive v1. v2 equals 1, 0, positive v2 in that direction. Suppose we start here, then we are circling from the positive 1 axis to the positive 2 axis. So we start on the positive 1 axis, circling towards the positive v2 axis. So we're circling, in fact, the x-plane clockwise. We're going the other way around, because we go from positive 1 to positive 2, and then, and so on, and so on. We're circling towards the origin. So we have a stable 
spiral points over here. So what happens to our mass in this case? It starts with a negative x and a positive velocity. So it starts, say, here, with equilibrium here, with positive velocity going in this direction, going through the equilibrium point with positive velocity, passing equilibrium point, reaching uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the other end, velocity reverse going back and forth, back and forth a couple of times, but eventually the movement ceases and the mass comes to a halt. So we tune down friction and what happens, we get a couple of oscillations before the mass actually stops to move. Well, well that coincides, hopefully it coincides with your physical intuition that if you tune down the friction a bit, it will take a bit longer for the movement to cease. So now we are also able to solve the problem uh, x prime equals ax, where a equals pcp inverse. And of course, this, this mass spring system by itself is not so interesting maybe at all. But the main point of those videos in this example is how to solve the problem x prime equals ax, whether a equals d, a equals c, a is similar to d or a is similar to c. You can do all of them and you can now apply all of those to your own problems.